Good afternoon and welcome to the Predicting the Branch of the Future webinar brought to you by FMSI. Thank you for joining us. My name is Chad Davis, Senior Vice President of Marketing at FMSI, and I'll be the presenter for today's call. Today we're going to start off talking about the branch banking trends. We're then going to talk about different branch types, different goals. Following that, we're going to break down the three types of branch of the futures, including personalized experience upscale model, self-directed technology model, and the traditional model. After that, we're going to look into utilizing appointment software. It's a closer look with Kip Sweeney from FMSI. And then towards the end, we're going to talk about the traditional branch and how it prevails with the right innovations. At the very end of the presentation, we're going to have an open discussion, including a Q&A session. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions throughout the webinar on the right side of your screen on the control panel. There is an area for you to type questions. We will answer questions immediately following the presentation. Today's speakers include myself and Kip Sweeney, who's the FMSI VP of Product Management. So is the branch going the way of the typewriter? Well, it's easy to see why many would think that. After all, there is a steady decline in overall transaction volumes in the branch, a 45% decline since 1991, and a recent declines in the number of branches in the U.S., nearly 5% since 2009. While many individual branches will likely seek significant changes in how they operate over the next 20 years, or even shut down, FMSI believes the branch in the coming decades will not only be alive and well, but will also, in many ways, be very similar to the branch of today. With 94,000 branches in the U.S. in 2014, with varying degrees of account holder bases, including different demographics, socioeconomics, and generational gaps, combining with geographic differences, it would be unlikely to see digital technologies cause a dramatic shift in how most branches operate in the coming decades. It is much more likely financial institutions will continue to have a dynamic mix of branch types tailored to the individual branch goals and circumstances. So banks are not book or music stores. Unlike other vanishing and retail specialty stores, most consumers at some point depend heavily on the face-to-face -face expertise of financial service professionals. Naturally, with the significant impact banking products can have on an account holder's finances, they often desire the extra attention to help establish trust and make sure they are getting the most out of each interaction. Ultimately, the trust and relationships developed in person have been and always will be paramount in the financial services industry. So branch banking trends. The FMSI's 2015 teller line study reported a mere 2% drop in average branch teller transactions for banks and a 12.2% drop for credit unions since 2011. For branches to close due to a max exodus of transactions from the branch caused by digital technologies, we would likely have seen much sharper declines in this, in this time period during unequivocally the most digitized banking era. Furthermore, the ratio of populations to branches has declined from 9,340 in 1970 to 2,970 in 2014. This staggering metric is a result from a nearly 300% growth in the number of branches since 1970, while the population growth was nearly half of that. Coupling the decline in the ratio of population to branches and the recent decline in bank branches suggests the market is starting to correct itself from being overbranched and not shutting down branches due to its functionality becoming dated. So different branch types, different goals. Understanding each branch may require extensive research. You should be able to answer such questions as, what are the demographics and socioeconomics of the area, along with what are the potential competitive forces? In a more affluent area with a large baby boomer population, a branch may benefit the most from increased sales training and branch sales acceleration technology investments. Conversely, in another area with a predominantly younger population with little money to invest, it might be a better idea to focus technology investments that drive a faster, more secure, and optimized branch environment. All right, right now we're going to talk about a management tip, uh, branch goals and collaboration. 
As part of the branch school process, it is important to have a coordinated effort between different departments, such as marketing and operations, as well as different types of employees from frontline staff all the way up to the senior level managers. A collaboration of all the different assets of your financial institution is an essential part to achieving the branch goals that you establish. Consider delegating a project sponsor to these specific collaboration efforts and hold quarterly meetings with department heads to review. The future of your branch network. So what can each branch realistically be and what innovative technologies can help realize their full potential? We're now going to look at the three different types of branch that FMSI thinks will be predominantly the branch of the future. The first branch we're going to talk about today is the personalized experience upscale model. Often referred to, re, often referred to as the Apple Store and Banking, the personalized experience upscale branch model aims to create a comfortable and trusting environment where account holders are impressed with hands-on, white, white glove type treatment from associates. Other than a sleek design, the key to achieving success with this branch experience weighs heavily on the caliber of staff who work there. Unlike traditional branches where activities are separated by divisions of labor, this type of branch mostly requires universal employees who handle the full spectrum of the account holder experience. Due to the increased per employee cost of this model, an FI feeds needs to carefully consider the sales potential when rolling out these types of branches. FMSI predicts that these specific and limiting requirements may cause this branch type to unlikely be the dominant branch type in 20 years. Another management tip, so hiring the right universal associates. Consider candidates with any and all types of sales experience, but searching specifically in the retail industry like the Apple Store can be a great place to start. These individuals are adept to working with the average consumer off the street and oftentimes are used to working on Saturdays. The types of technology associated with the personalized experience model include the tablet, the interactive touch screens that provide both educational and or mood setting to establish ambiance, and also branch activity tracking software which carefully tracks interaction metrics in real time like wait time, assist time, and employee cross-sell ratios. I'm going to take a closer look at one of FMSI's clients, Jean Dayart Credit Union. They Im implemented lobby tracking software in 2014 and it was instrumental in understanding their lobby performance. Over the years between 2014 and 2015, they were able to decrease their wait times from 4 minutes and 54 seconds to 4 minutes and 27 seconds through better understanding their processes in their lobby and which employees were uh, handling the assist times uh, properly with different types of sales and service requests. The assist times went from 19 minutes to 8 seconds to 15 minutes and 22 seconds in 2015. The most uh, sought after items that they tracked for in 2014 were debit cards, general questions, and checking accounts. And they added account maintenance uh, over checking accounts um, or under checking accounts there in 2015. The next type of model we're going to discuss is the self-directed technology model. Probably what most of us imagine when we think of the branch of the future is the self-directed technology model, where the consumer's experience is focused on extremely fast, easy, and secure interactions made possible by futuristic technologies. These types of branches generally have the most potential in highly populated areas where sp space is limited and transaction volumes are high. But scaled-back versions of this model also give FIs an affordable option to expand their service to more rural areas. With significantly less staffing requirements to keep these branches up and running, FIs will experience sizable cost savings over time when compared to more traditional branch operations. Due to the affordability and reach of these branches, FMSI predicts these types of branches will see significant increases over the next 20 years. The type of innovative technologies associated with the self-directed technology model includes smart ATMs, which are less expensive smaller than, and smaller than regular ATMs, but they have special smart features such as giving out specific de denominations uh, in cash. Video interactive tellers, which offer personal interactions with scaled cost savings. 
and also the branch appointment software, which drives loan traffic to the branch and eliminates lobby wait times. At this point, we're going to turn the presentation over to Kip Sweeney, the FMSI VP of Product Management. He's going to give a brief demo of the FMSI Omnix Appointment Concierge. Kip? Thanks, Chad. So we'll get into the demonstration now. Um, this is what we're looking at here. I've got a fa sample financial institution's website up, and the Omnix Appointment Concierge application is designed to be implemented on, on the page uh, or portion of the website of the users or the clients choosing. What I'm going to do here I'm gonna, is I'm going to walk through the account holder experience from the appointment booking to the check-in in the branch. Um, and then we'll get into more of a role of someone like a branch manager um, or a MSR, customer service representative, who's servicing appointments and managing those in our, in our portal. So from the perspective of the account holder, they're going to log on to the organization's website, the financial institution's website, and they'll click to schedule an online appointment, which is going to bring up our appointment dialog. This dialog is accessible via desktop, tablet, or mobile device. And I'm as an account holder, I'm presented with a list of categories of services that I can select from. So I'm going to select New Accounts. This will bring up a list of services that fall under that category. And if I select Sub-Savings Account, it's going to load locations that are capable of performing that particular product or service. It will load those locations. Um, in the order of those closest to my physical location using the location services technology in my tablet or my mobile device. If I'm a user who or an account holder who does not have location services enabled, I can enter a zip code or a city to load locations closest to me. Uh, for the purpose of our demo, I'm using the Eastern Center branch. So now we've selected the sub-savings account. Um, the dialog is then going to load any staff members at that branch who have the skills to service that particular appointment. So if I have a preference, maybe I like working with Codgel, I can select that and it will load Codgel specific availability uh, in the branch. So Codgel's next available appointment is at 2.45 p.m. today. I'm going to select that. I'll enter my name. And I'm sorry, this is actually pre-filled because I did this earlier. Um, I'll enter my email address and phone number. This is an optional field. If, but if I want to receive text message alerts, which are, which are useful for reminding me that my appointment's coming up in the next hour, I'll do that. If there's any notes that I want Codgel to be aware of or the branch to be aware of for my visit, um, I'll enter them here. So you'll see that this is really centered around um, increasing consumer autonomy. So I will submit the request. What this will do is it will send me an email with my appointment details, the confirmation number, the time, the location, the product or service. I can add this to the calendar of my choice, Outlook, Google, iCal. I can also, from this dialog, cancel my appointment or modify it or book another appointment. So that's it. Within the space of about 30 seconds, I have an appointment booked um, for the Eastern Center branch to discuss a sub-savings account. Moving to the time where I walk into the branch, I will approach a self-service kiosk with a list of options. Um, as an as a account holder who has booked an appointment, I don't need to sign in to wait. I can check in for my scheduled appointment here. I'll enter the confirmation number and my last name, indicating to the members of the branch that I'm ready for service. If I had not created an appointment, I would have the option, if the wait were long, to schedule a future appointment in the branch. Or I could sign in for service to see the next available staff member. That's the experience of the account holder from appointment booking to their entrance in the branch. Let's move over and discuss the experience of a branch manager or a customer service representative, member service representative, who's servicing appointments. Give me a moment here to uh, change screens. Okay. 
So what I'm looking at here, as from a perspective of a branch manager, when I log in, I'm presented with several important pieces of information regarding the appointments uh, and the appointment booking activity in the branch. I have the total appointments for today. Of those, how many have been serviced? Um, I get a picture of the appointment booking activity both for the day and the week on our website. I get some information that points me to the most requested products or services. So that's the, those are the things that are driving traffic in the branch, the interests of the visitors of my branch. Um, and I can see by staff member who has appointments assigned um, of those which have been canceled. And I get a picture of the, the day statistics showing completed and canceled appointments as well. I might navigate over to the appointment calendar if I need to make any changes to existing appointments, um, if I need to add appointment, an appointment for uh, an account holder, or I may block off time in the branch where I don't want appointments to be scheduled for the coming week. Perhaps we have a staff meeting um, or, or another event that will affect our appointment availability. As a branch manager, I can filter my views to look at the view for the day, for the week, I can filter down to look at appointments that pertain to particular categories or products or service, um, as well as appointments by staff member. I'll speak to the synchronized calendar in a moment when I talk about the administrative portion. Um, let me navigate over to our reports section. So one of the things that we built into Omnix Appointment Concierge is the ability to to pull reports on appointments for a date range um, for particular staff members, products and services, and get some, some additional metrics on um, appointment statuses, as well as information that's downloadable to Excel for further analysis. From the administrative perspective in OAC, or in our Omnix appointment concierge, uh, users, administrative users will set up locations and they will define the products and services that are performed at those locations, the amount of time those particular products and services take to perform. They also set up the location's holiday calendar, their hours of availability. They'll set things like the number of appointments that can be booked per hour so that, um, so that the staff within the branch aren't swamped with more appointments than they're able to handle based on uh, the number of staff in the branch. We allow administrators to set up users and their availability. We allow them to set up their, the user's particular skills and their proficiency at those skills. So for example, if there are two representatives in the branch who can both perform mortgage applications, but one is particularly more proficient, we want those, we want appointments for mortgages to go to the one with the higher proficiency. Um, that's something that can be configured within the tool. We also allow appointments to be scheduled preferentially with uh, seniority rankings. So if we have staff members who've been with us longer and we want to give them the benefit of having first dibs on a particular products and service, uh, we can do that. Let me navigate to one other piece that I think is one of my favorite features of appointment concierge, which is follow-up emails. Um, and this is very important because for those members or customers that visit our branch, we want to ensure that we're following up and closing the loop, um, both for those that have, have completed an appointment in the branch, but also for those that have left the branch for some reason or canceled the, their appointment. We want to ensure that, if at all possible, we can get them back into the branch. So what I can do in, with the follow-up emails tool is I can search for uh, particular parameters um, for appointments to see which appointments fell within the t time range. Um, and then I can go through and say, send appointment email, follow-up emails to these folks who um, left the branch and did, or, or canceled and didn't show to schedule a new appointment. And it'll include a link to schedule that appointment. Um, and for those that were in the branch, we may send an email saying, um, we're, we're, thanks, thank you for coming to the branch today, uh, and we'll have the location name, we'll have the appointment start time and their service, and we might even include a, to, uh, for a survey to get their feedback on how the appointment went. So 
if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to submit them, and we'll get to those later on. Chad, I'm going to turn it back to you. All right, thanks, Kip. At this point, we're going to do another management tip about technology adoption. Many consumers are not interested in self-directed technologies and tend to only use them when human interactions are either not available or there are much longer wait times for the alternative. Once again, make sure to know your specific branch account basis tolerance for self-directed technologies. Some institutions have implemented soft rollouts of smart ATMs and interactive video tellers to gauge the impact before removing tellers and completely overhauling a branch. Another management tip about training branch employees. It is imperative to properly train branch employees on how to get the most out of the technology. Without intimate knowledge of the true value of each machine, it is unlikely they will be able to properly convey how to be utilizing the equipment to the account holders. This will likely impact adoption rates and lessen the effectiveness of the costly investment. All right, the third and final future branch we're going to discuss today is the traditional model. An oldie but a goodie, this branch type is familiar to us all. A row of teller windows, a roped off line, and a handful of desks and or private offices throughout gives this type of branch a functional layout that works very well for many markets. Like it or not, this model is here to stay for a number of years. As of today, the vast majority of branches operate in this way and with an average of 6,500 transactions per month. Where this model is most effective is it's designed to handle as many face-to-face -face interactions as it can. And in an industry where a premium is placed on personal inter, inter, per, in-person exchanges, it can generally lead to a healthy number of deposits and loan activity. Financial, institu financial institution management teams have spent an enormous amount of time and effort towards maximizing the earnings from traditional branches, which will certainly continue in the future, especially with emerging sophisticated technologies. The innovative technologies associated with the traditional model include staff schedulers based on activity forecasts, which address the complexity of hour-to-hour -hour traffic demands while maintaining service levels. Lobby activity tracking software and branch appointment software, which we've already talked about. Cash recyclers, which automate low-value cash transactions. And vault cash analysis software, which minimizes on-hand cash requirements at each branch. Now I'm going to take a closer look at Jean de Arc Credit Union's uh, use of the staff, their staff scheduler uh, provided by FMSI. They're still building traditional branches. Uh, actually, they built their seventh branch last year, which was uh, smaller than their older branches that they used to build at 2,500 square feet, four teller windows, and four MSR desks. Their older branch had typically 4,000 square feet, seven teller windows, and five MSR desks. They uh, attribute this to the average age of their members decreasing. That's why they're building smaller branches that are more technology uh, focused. They rely on this technology to improve efficiencies and enhance the uh, customer experience or the member experience. Jean Dea Credit Union implemented the teller management software in 2012 from FMSI. They saw a decrease in their FTEs by nearly two, even though they opened a whole new location. And they saw a decrease in their excess waiting for work time and an uh, increase in their productivity. I'm going to talk about another management tip about the hours of operation. Carefully study the operating hours of each of your branches. Perhaps you will uncover an opportunity to open the branches later or close the branches earlier, potentially saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process. Learn more about how FMSI can help with this with its hours of operation analysis solution. Digitizing our world carries many advantages that will continue to steer us toward a faster and more efficient existence. Unfortunately, an increase in digital technology adoption can also lead to a decline in genuine human interactions, gradually leaving individuals frustrated with a lack of more personal relationships. This lack of person-to-person -person exchange can be detrimental to many industries, but possibly none more than the financial services space. Naturally, with the significant impact banking products can have on an account holder's finances, they often desire the extra attention to help establish trust and make sure they are getting the most out of each interaction. 
with the branch being the major conduit between account holders and their institution for building personal relationships through face-to-face -face interactions, the current form of the branch will be a critical component in the future, just as it is, just as it is now. Both the recording of this webinar and the PDF of the PowerPoint will be available on our website. I will email a direct link to this web page to everyone on this call. Now let's get to the Q&A. All right, well, it looks like we have a few questions that have come in already. And uh, we're going to get to as many questions as we can here. If uh, we don't get to your question today, we'll certainly make sure to follow up on an individual basis. So the first question here is for Kip. Kip, what if an account holder makes an appointment and it is assigned to someone that is actually off that day, uh, or they were maybe they called in sick? Yeah, absolutely, Chad. Um, from the appointment calendar, a user can go in or a branch manager can go in, open up an appointment, and reassign it to another staff member who is available. Um, very simple change. All right, good stuff. Moving on, we've got another question here that I'll address. Uh, the question is, does your scheduling software handle universal associates? And uh, yeah, the, the answer is yes. Uh, FMSI scheduling solution collects all frontline interactions and then provides a detailed forecast for whole branch scheduling. So um, we, we collect that data uh, in a number of way, ways depending on what kind of data is available, but uh, oftentimes uh, we just pull right straight from the core system, and then also uh, our lobby tracker collects platform data. Um, so, all right, moving on to the next question. Here we go. This one's for Kip. Kip, can the appointment software send reminder emails and texts? It can, yes. That's uh, not something we touched on a whole lot during the demo, but essentially uh, users will be able to configure the, the time frame that they want to send that reminder email or text message. Typically, we'll see like a reminder email go out the day before the appointment, and then a reminder text come in perhaps an hour before the uh, the account holder's appointment in the branch. Very good. Good stuff. We'll, let's see here. The next question I'll I'll, uh, I'll address here. Question is: What should we consider when considering to transform older branches into a branch of the future? Well, it's it's it really is about asking the right questions. So when looking to repurpose existing space and creating something new, the first question is why? Um, we want to quantify why we want to transform the space, and then we can make decisions on what, what it should do and look like. Beyond the why are who and what, which members are using this branch now, and how can you continue to serve them while reaching out to a member base with expanded and enhanced ser services? So. You know, really just making sure you understand what you're doing there and, and then uh, you know, tackling it in, in a kind of step-by-step -step, uh, process. So that should put you, send you in the right direction. Um, next question here is for Kip. Kip, does your uh, appointment solution sync with Outlook calendars? Yes, it does. Uh, what we do with uh, the appointment, what we call the uh, concierge sync, is we will take information from a user's calendar and we'll pull that into our appointment setting system. So anything that's a, that's a calendar invite or a meeting um, will we'll show as unavailable time. So, um, so yes, to answer your question, we do. Very good. Perfect. So the next question here that I'll address uh, is, you mentioned higher costs for universal associates. Uh, can you provide any figures around this? Well, we've we've heard a, a number of different figures. Um, I think first I'll just um, address the the kind of the, the premise of the question. I think a lot, there's there's some confusion or varying degrees of de the definition of universal associates. Um, I've seen people define them as um, you know basically uh, tellers that can do some MSR activity or any kind of service representative activity, and then I've seen others. Um, define universal associates as those who, who go through extensive service representative training and teller training um, to the point to where they're basically service representatives that, that can certainly handle any kind of teller activity um, and, and almost handle any kind of service representative activity. So it depends on, on, on what your definition of universal associates um, is and, and how you come up with it. But um, to get to the, the, the base of the question, We've, we've heard as little as a couple more dollars per hour than your, your, your typical teller um, to as high as, what, as, as high as what lobby representatives are earning. So hope that answers your question. Uh, 
let's see here. We have time for one more question. Uh, this one's going to be for Kip. Kip, how will the system know the closest branch for our account holder appointment? Yeah, good question, Chad. We went over that a little bit in the demo earlier, and what we saw was that we FMSI ties into the browser's location services, so we'll load um, locations or branches that are closest to that person um, using that technology. And again, anybody who has location services turned off, um, they're able to just search by zip code, search by their location. But automatically, we'll pull uh, the branches by default that are closest to the user's, the account holder's physical location. All right, perfect. Well, that'll conclude today's Q&A and uh, presentation. I want to thank everybody for their time this afternoon. Uh, as a reminder, we are going to be sending out an email uh, with the uh, presentation PDF and a recording of this uh, presentation today. And I want to wish everybody a great rest of the day. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.